I'd like to thank the sponsor of this week's episode, the band Last Letters, whose song I Love You, Amy Smart, you are listening to right now. Last Letters is a brand new solo act by, oh my god, Charlie Ewok. I know it's not pronounced like that. I should have asked you beforehand. I'm so sorry, dude. But it's important to know that what you're hearing is one guy who performed, recorded, and mixed everything. He is living my dream, and this song is so, so, so good. Last Letters, thank you so much for supporting the podcast. And to everyone listening, check our show notes to find out where you can stream this new single, which released today, January 1st, 2021. Thank you so much to Last Letters, and now to start the 2005 Mixtape Draft episode. Pop, pop! Tom, you are my pop, pop. (laughs) Oh no, my nose hit my sound guard. Oh no, sound guard, is that what it's called? Sound garden. (laughs) Freudian slip, because we're doing a 90s draft today. What? Just kidding. (laughs) We're, oh, Pat, we've kind of been super nervous to do this episode. It's been a long time since we've done a year draft because we are now hitting high school. 2005 was our year of uh, coming out of eighth grade, going into ninth grade. Yeah. It's starting to feel very formative. You know what's fun about important. the year 2005? Ooh, what's that? Every record ever recorded was released that year. <laughs> so that is a fun, you know, I didn't know. I had a feeling that there was a few, but I didn't know all of recorded music history came out in 2005. So it's, it's wild. an interesting little nugget. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be hard. I can already hear someone on Twitter, probably Chris, going, I can't believe you didn't pick that American Hi Fi <laughs> song. I really, in, uh, keeping us honest is part of you guys all do a good job. Um, <laughs> But I think that we were most nervous because, yeah, it was our freshman year. There's such a redonk <laughs> list of albums that came out. And it should be noted that we're not going to include Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge and American Idiot because I, I believe we used those songs in the 04 draft slash they were released in 04, so that's how it should play out. And also, it would just honestly cluster up what is already a crazy packed field. But we're definitely going 10 deep for those who are just joining us and this is your first mixtape episode. Tom and I will take turns picking the best possible mixtape we can think of. A 10-song mixtape, head-to-head. You can't pick a song twice. You could probably go off the same album on a different song, but there's we'll, we'll see how it plays out. And all the songs that we're picking were re- released in the year 2005. Yes, exactly. But this is not going to be like uh, the mood mixtapes lying on the floor or scrubs where it's kind of like collaborative and kind of like, oh, what this is, this is, we're back to the real business. I'm ready to <laughs> f*** you up. I'm going to f*** <laughs> you up. Yeah. I have like tears. I ranked them out. I'm ready to rock. If you go a certain way, I'm going to go in another way. Like I'm ready for, there's like different paths of working my way through <laughs> certain levels of how I've ranked these songs. But without further ado, happy new year, everybody. Let's freaking go 2020 is over and i am excited to start off the year with a bang and i'm also a little teaser for next week bowling for soup girl all the bad guys want episode which i don't know how we hadn't done that yet but i'm very excited for these first two two weeks two two episodes of the new year um because i think last a few episodes ago i said in like making small talk at the end of an episode, I said, well, 2020 has been fun. It has not. I think I was just talking to Tom like, hey, we've had at least a corner of our worlds has been enjoyable through this strange hobby of ours is just wanted to make a quick clarification there. But no, 2021 is upon us. Hopefully uh, a better year for health and sanity and all that. Anyway, I've been talking for a bit. Tom, do you have the dice or anything to add before we hit into this uh, head on head, head on head, head on head? I'll stop. What is going on, everybody? I'm Tom. And I'm Pat. We're best friends, and you're listening to the Reminiscent Podcast. All right, before we really get into the episode here, I want to thank our newest Patreon supporter joining the Emo Elders, Chris Lukey. This guy might actually be the original Emo Elder because this dude is old as sh. Chris Lukey, more like Chris Dukey. Just kidding. He's a great guy. He's a good friend of ours. He's such a good guy. In fact, Good Charlotte once called me and was like, Chris Lukey, more like Great Lukey. Am I right? 
All right, f- me, that was awful. Chris, thank you so much for joining the Patreon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you, dude. Now, for real, onto the episode. Let's do this. The sum of the last four of my social security number, even or odd number? Even. Even, okay. It is an odd number. The sum is 11. Okay. Do you want to go first or second and third? Hmm. I'm not going to say what I think you should do because uh, um, I'm, I'm a, there's one there's one song that. So you're, you're going first? No. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it and go. Risk it for the brisket, dude? So, <laughs> I'm going to risk it and go second and third. <sighs> hmm. Okay. I'm gonna pick "I'm a Hustler" by Cassidy. Oh, whew, I've no. Okay, just kidding. No. Just kidding. That's <laughs> a different never podcast. Never even heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love that song. Um, okay, I had. If you were gonna go second to third, I promised myself I'd pick this song first because I think it would be a good track one on the mixtape. Uh, I'm gonna go "Come In Hot" with Coheed and Cambria's "Welcome Home." Oh, um, could have picked the suffering off that album, but I think everyone knew this riff at the time. Everyone knew like it's definitely. I want that to also set the tone for this episode, like. LFG, let's f-ing go. <laughs> like, <laughs> really fun, really fun. Um, like, having been aware of Coheed, and then they came out with this, and you're like, oh, I wonder how this album's going to, you know, I like this band. I wonder. And then you hear Welcome Home, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah. um, the, the riff alone, I think we made, it was the soundtrack to a goofy YouTube video I made with my neighbors. The chess. Um, the chess yeah, video. Yeah, we had like a very epic chess match with me and my oh. buddy Kenny. We used to do. Back, everyone had like a, basically was doing good neighbory type Lonely Island ripoff YouTube stuff back then. So um, it was heavily in, in the rotation and made a lot of like pre junior high or no high school, I guess at this point, um, JV uh, things to run to or bike to or do anything active to. Much love to Coheed, continuing to bring light into my life uh, with <laughs> well, with this album as well. Yeah, I, I, I pine for that video i think about it probably every other month it was so funny of like the most epic chess game lots of slow-mo and like oh man it was good i i really think like you dave Corey, and all them jay that did the videos if you had stuck with it if the right person saw it could have been uh competition to whitest kids you know i thought they were so funny oh um, thanks there was an interesting little run I, yeah my buddy dave had a camera and one of the or, you know one of the f- got an IE Mac, I guess. Yeah, like one of the first laptop, not first, but you know, got a laptop, got iMovie back when that was being kind of more popular and you could do things. One of his best videos was A Man in His Foot. It was like the first oh quote God. unquote <laughs> LCC productions. It, it was Lake Cliff production, you know, Lake Cliff crew is what we called ourselves. But yeah, he just filmed himself like it was epic music with him staring at his own foot. <laughs> but then it ends with him like falling on the ground with a bottle of pills and stuff. And it's just like. <laughs> Really bizarre, funny, but there was a good run of, uh, of yeah. probably eight to 10 videos that are lost. Um, there was like some reoccurring characters we called the soccer dads. Anyway, that's not for this episode, <laughs> but yes, well, uh, Coheed was, was just around and we were thankful for it. So yeah, super good. Um, okay. I'm, I'm really relieved. I know that we're going each 10 deep and we, I, I have like 20 honorable mentions. Yeah. Honorable so. mentions are going to get wild. <laughs> I don't want the the episode to be an hour and a half long, um, but I'm going to pick the obvious one. Sugar, we're going down by Fallout Boy, right? Okay, um, f- <laughs> you. We're swearing today. We're bleeping that word. Okay, I knew the chances I was taking. If you, but you were wise to go second and third. I didn't want to tip my hand, but yeah, that that's the correct pick. Should we just take tracks from from under the cork tree? Like, I, is that just yeah. how the rest of this episode's going to go? <laughs> I could easily just do one through ten on that album. I mean, it's one of those things where. You know, can it can certain musical tastes or takes be objective? Like, I was looking at some of the stuff later on the album. I was looking at some other songs. I'm like, okay, how many are going to be in in the mix here for what we're going to draft? And I was like, it's got to be Sugar is the first pick. <laughs> I just think you know, you could be like, fans of bands talk themselves in and out of. They go through phases of which songs are hitting differently at certain points of their life. You know, kind of like a we talk about it all the time on the show. But yeah, I think Sugar has to be the pick. I think it's a good pick. When you first heard it, I don't know. I, I think I've said this on the show before. We were at a little league tournament or like a pony league uh, in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. And I just remember being like, dude, I need to borrow your iPod because I didn't have one. I was just like, Corey Bartlett, <laughs> give me that shit. I need this. I don't know what the f- 
this is, but we had just heard, we had just seen the music video on MTV or something in the hotel room. And he let me have it. And I just sat in the hall and just listened to the chicka chickas, to the <laughs> chorus, to, it was just, it just knocked me backward. It, it was amazing. Good pick. I mean, it's, uh, it's probably one of the top 10 songs of all time. I'm glad that we caught it. Apparently it rated, I was looking at like the, top 200 albums of the year 2005 this was like number 150 something with like a 60 out of 100 score from rolling stone like Insane. there were some dog I, shit albums that placed over this one. well there's a lot of like indie darlings that came out this year like some mountain goat stuff some stuff from the national and stuff that maybe some hold steady records that have aged well over time yeah, so like yeah, yeah. we'll get into it in the honorable mentions but for the sake of the show that's f-ed up if we were doing Desert Island album singular, it might be from under the court tree. Like if you had to take one, I'm pretty sure I've been realizing it lately. I'm like, huh, I listened to this weekly before we even started doing the podcast. I guess I hadn't thought about it. This might, if you had to pick one album, it might be from under the court tree for me. Um, great pick, but I don't want to belabor the point that me it's just, crazy. me like it. I like it a lot. It's an obvious one. The second one, an obvious one, Pressure by Paramore. You f- <laughs> yeah okay so we are going for the throat my first three tiers that i have lit are just taking things dropping like bodies okay you i'll let you speak on it but nice pick we're reading it. we are on the same page is all i'll say i i watched the music video first of all i watch it probably monthly right um it just sent me down the spiral of like I'm 16 again and all of these feelings that, you know, in retrospect yeah. weren't very important, but it's like the most important feelings in the world. And God, that video you talk crazy. about, Ugh. you talk about from under the court tree and you talk about sugar, we're going down to like, Hey, I've talked myself into this, not being the best song in the record. False. It is pressure's the same way for me over the years. I'm like conspiracy might be my favorite Paramore song, but really mm. you go back and you listen to pressure and what your first introduction to the band was and how exciting that sound was. Mm. Pressure has a lot of the angst that conspiracy does and it's a hit, you know, they're both good, but I, you know, that the pressure, that whole idea of being a teen and feeling that whatever that is, um, pressure brings it and highlights a lot of the strengths of the, or the early version of the band, I guess. Great pick, man. Yeah. I mean, Emergencies on that record. There's a lot of good songs Ooh. you could pick, but I think I think Pressure's the definite pick. You're you're reading my mind. You took my first rung of the dock and just took a giant dumpy on it. <laughs> and um, I, I'm just happy for your mixtape. I'm I'm gonna come back swinging. Uh, I will say, but uh, yeah, I think we talk about this won't be the last time we talk about Paramore on the show. So again, I don't want to make this a two hour episode, but. Was this your, the first song you heard by them? I think it might have been Misery Business was actually the first song I heard by them. But then I, it was like one of those moments where it's like, this is the greatest record in the world. I don't know what I'm going to do while I wait for more of their music. And then it's like, oh, yeah. f- there's a whole previous oh, yeah. album. There's two. There, yeah, I think I might have heard this or Hallelujah. And somebody's like, yeah. Oh, geez. I'm like, who, who is it? Who is this person? It's like, Haley Williams is the name. And this is the band. These are the records. I don't even want to waste any more of your time. Just go <laughs> soak it in. You know, it's just like, I think it was Seth, one of our buddies from Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just like, this is, he was just kind of like, I picture him as um hustler kid from the show Recess, where it's just like, Seth, what is this? And what do I need to know? It's like, these are the albums. This is the name, Haley Williams. You're going to Google that name. She's got red hair. Okay. There's an album with a couch on it. That's the first one, right? It's better, but there's a lot to love about both. <laughs> Move along, kid. Get out of here, kid. It's like, thanks, Seth. You know, just new, Seth just new stuff. Yeah, he was like yeah. a great emo hair look Ooh, at the, the time. The best, yeah, had a nice little little bit of a bleach bang going, and he made it work. Um, anyway, good picks. Uh, is it officially my turn to go? I don't want to rush the process, yes. but I, I got to say that's a great pick. Yeah, I mean, Paramore, it, they have such a, a strong place in my heart. I feel like every Paramore video that heavily features Haley Williams, I'm just going to be a sucker for. 16 year old me was just like so 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 head over heels in love and um, yeah the video still hit just as hard especially pressure it's such a good video like oh it ends with the the guy and the girl coming to get oh man it's so good we got to do the music video sometime sure <laughs> let's do it <laughs> because it's like a it's like a hot dog cook you know is one of the main characters and I think you spent some time in that job. So maybe you can relate to some of those. Uh, oh, those yes. Pressures. Some Erie Seawolf, Jerry at Park. 
<laughs> I'm no longer called that. But yes, I spent a time or two on Dollar Dog Night uh, <laughs> putting hundreds, binfuls of dogs, Smith's dogs, into these like high tech pressure cookers that would cook like hundreds of dogs in like a two minute period. It was like this mega microwave, the size of like early computers, basically. It was anyway, for a different show. <laughs> Excuse okay. me. Okay. okay. Um, I'm just sniffling in your ear. This edit's going to be rough for you, especially because I just keep also swearing every time I talk. So uh, let's do this. Everything is all right by Motion City Soundtrack. Oh, let's just let's just man. get let's just get them out of the way. Tom, 2005 was insanity. <laughs> um, we've already hit a Paramore album from Under the Cork Tree. There's my second pick in this round is going to be another one of the major dominoes. Oh, uh, but Motion City Soundtrack. Everything is all right. Um, Let's just play this game. It may be Motion City's best album, deepest album. We've oh, done an episode about this album. Um, I don't know if that's a hot take. You tell me. I mean, they're all great. I love them all. So I, I would love to hear the arguments just because I'm curious to talk about it. But Everything Is All Right might be the best Motion City soundtrack to- song on the best Motion City soundtrack album. But it goes back to that theory of like, okay, let's just back up. What are we going to tell the aliens? It's like, well, I don't know, man. I'll feel the arguments, but... This song's f***ing good. It features Patrick Stump, the most 2005 thing possible for a feature on this record, produced by Mark Hoppus, just a lot going for it. Um, We had a really, I would say, a tremendous amount of fun doing this episode, because the album episodes are tough, but I think we, that was a good one for both of us. Oh, man. Everything about this song, it's got the great Bizarro verses where he's very anxious and kind of dire, (laughs) like, journaling through his struggles with anxiety and everything, and... um, uh, cleaning the oven and checking my tires. It's oh, just yeah. tremendous. I don't know. I had to I pick most of the soundtrack man. song early. Absolutely. Okay. Good pick. That's a really, really strong pick. It's one of the big ones. Um, and this is where it's going to get a little tricky because I have to pick one of two that I don't know. Um, all right. I'm going to gamble. I'm going to go gamble. And you can tell me. I'll tell you what I should have... I'll tell you, you, you may pick what I'm not picking next, next. So this is kind of a big moment in the draft. But I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to go slow down by the Academy is. Okay. At the time, based on what we've learned from Fueled by Ramen's treatment of Fall Out Boy music videos, they were, this was the shit, this, this band was the band that was supposed to be more successful than other Fueled by Ramen acts at the time. Um, but there was an album by both that came out this year. And uh, I think in terms of all-time impact on my life, stuff I've listened to, listened to or get hyped to, I think Slow Down might be something I like more than any Panic at the Disco song, I guess. Not to whoa, tip my hand whoa, too much. Whoa. but Hey, hey, we're just talking it out here, man. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, A Fever You Can't Sweat Out was going to get brought up today. Fueled by Ramen was going to get brought up today. I think I got to go slow down here. I think... Crazy song, crazy album, really fun fuse. There was like third and fourth like cable music video channels popping up just because like there was like a thirst for, I know we always joke about give me something the kids will cry for, but the hair, <laughs> um, the lyrics, really fun. I don't know, kind of captivating song. You wanted to know more about the band, Fueled by Ramen. This was a big ass year for them, I think, is the <laughs> yeah, main headline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to go in that direction with my mixtape. I'm going to go slow down. The Academy is. That shit rocks hard as f***. About two-thirds of the way through the song, musically it rocks. I would argue that the song, I don't know if there's a weakness perception with The Academy is. Maybe not. Maybe I'm making that up. But I think this song legitimately rocks. Capital R, capital O, capital C, capital K, capital S. Wow, that's <laughs> words longer than I expected to be when I started that. But yeah, I, I'm picking it. I feel like I'm trying to justify it because now I'm getting self-conscious about it. But I feel good about it. I feel good about it. Okay, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked it, but it's definitely a very good song. Not gonna not gonna sit here and hate on it. But I do have a very good song. I just set the table for you a bit, but we'll see how you handle the 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 riches here. Okay. Well the well this counts. Give me not now by Blink 182. It um it was released as a single oh. on their greatest hits album. Whoa. Con- is this my a boy. deep cut? I don't know. I've um, abandoned my boy. I've abandoned my child. <laughs> um, whatever that means. Um, yeah, okay. It counts because the greatest hits, you know, that wasn't original that that year. Right. I mean, I could have picked all the small things because it came off the greatest hits. Um, yes. Which, But, I mean, this is a legitimate new release for 2005. Yeah, count it. 
I'm I'm more of a man overboard guy, but that's only because as we've you wait, know gone over wait. a million times on the show. Wait, did Man Overboard come out on the same? Oh man, I don't, I'm not helping you any more than you need. <laughs> my, my, my... <laughs> now I'm like freaking out. Um, no, I wish man we had overboard a timer. Was released in this is 2000. Oh, was it released with the live album? Never mind, I'm I'm way off, dude. That but if we're going by <laughs> that really songs me by for Blank. A Songs by Blink that belong in the greatest hits that yeah, aren't yeah. on any of the albums we've grown to love. I'm more of them. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I prefer Man Overboard to Not Now. But Not Now kind of set the table in our brains for what Angels and Airwaves would become, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and it was just like, oh, oh, wait a minute. You know, so very <laughs> exciting pick. I like the pick. Yeah. No, I stoked when I, because I don't think I would have thought of that. It, it showed up in like a rolling stones or wikipedia or something um so that's a good one gotta get blink in anywhere i can uh the other obvious one is i was loving this song at the time a lot of the ones that i'm talking about today i feel like i listened to for the first time probably a year a year later in 2006 or 2007 perhaps but I told the story about the uh, the cute skater girl Savannah burning me a Panic at the Disco CD, like yes. writing all yes. the stuff in Sharpie on it. I loved that record. I remember like doing a a biology project with Seth, who we just talked about with the the bangs, and kind of like having an earbud in each ear doing a biology project. There was iodine involved. I don't remember the rest, and listening to. <laughs> In listening to I Write Sins, Not Tragedies by uh, Panic at the Disco. So that's going to be my number That four. is the level of detail. I, <laughs> <laughs> for me, because we both took the same classes, we were in the same grade, had the same teacher. Um, that is about as much detail as I could provide as well. So that's the reason I'm laughing, I think. It's like, yep, there was iodine on some project in some freshman. Yeah, There was a microscope. We were in a different teacher's <laughs> room and uh, huddled around a microscope listening to Panic at the Disco. That's how I think of this band. What's the song, my guy? What's I the write Sins Not Tragedies. Okay. It's got to be, right? It's got to be. It was a fun, okay. that was a Tweet really the show fun episode that we did. At underscore reminiscent FM. We haven't done the album yet. We've oh, done... we did the we did the music video. Yeah, we did the music yeah. video. Yeah, pretty pretty fun. The the Vegas the Vegas fellas, uh, whether it's Panic or the Killers, the they always have a very uh, yeah very showy, very fun music videos coming from those bands. Um, yep. Yeah. Did it? Here's a question. Did it get better for Fueled by Ramen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they kind of quickly went downhill, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about yeah, you're talking about the Academy is Panic at the Disco and Fall Out Boy popping the <laughs> f off this year one of those three and becomes one of the bands of the decade like you look at what the hell omega tour would have been last year if the pandemic hadn't hit i mean follow boys one of the heavy hitters at this point whether we like it or not they just straight up are considered to be that so um not to take anything away from panic or uh although they i guess take a little bit away from panic considering what the band did after the guitarist slash lyricist you know what happened to them after he left after that first record or whatever but um yeah disappointing career for the academy is as well a lot of high hopes got to have high hopes for a living <laughs> for these some of these individuals <laughs> again no more shots taken at panic but what a record phoebe can't sweat out some of the lyrics on that album are we're just like got some stuff to learn i'm just a boy <laughs> what right. does this mean and they weren't much older yeah. than us either it's wild yeah, well, the the only difference between martyrdom and suicide is press coverage being a song title. It was the it was just like this is happening, everything is happening. It's like, <laughs> well, she's not bleeding in the bathroom floor just for the attention. It's like, what the <laughs> f is this? Anyway, came out like crazy. A uh, lot of energy, a lot of just great picks. Wow, not a not a not a questionable pick thus far. But I believe the ball is back in my court. Yes, for your number four. <sighs> you want to know what else came out that year, Tom? <laughs> oh, what else came out that year? Uh, I'm, I'm going to take Crooked Teeth by Death Cab for Cutie because Plans also came out that yeah, year. Yeah, what the f***? <laughs> I, I know. Every, I was scrolling through like the list of every album that came out, and I was like, I just don't want to miss anything. And every month that I scrolled, I was like, what? <laughs> like, No! <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, so Give Me a Crooked Teeth. Is it the best song on the record? No. Uh, there's a song on that record that you love that I didn't want to pick. Mm. Um, 
you know, I think Crooked Teeth is the best, one of my favorite, it might be my favorite Death Cab song. Just, it just hit me one summer in a way that a song hits you. And I'm not saying yeah. I'm right. I'm just saying that's what it is for me. It's just nice. And I just like it. And I wanted to get a Death Cab song on the record. I think we both, you know, it wasn't all emo, 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 screamo, screamo, breakdown. I mean, that wasn't the traje traje trajectory for both of us. It wasn't that simple. There was also, you know, I mean, there was the indie boom, right? You can't ignore, I mean, not that I'm going to say something that doesn't make sense. And I don't really know how I'm trying, I don't know how to put into words what I'm trying to say, but it wasn't all breakdowns in like a dissension into the screamo verse. Um, I think we both had romantic interests that were illuminating a different side quest is what I'm trying to say, right? So it was like, oh, Death Cab for Cutie. I'd love to learn more about that. Well, and this also, and that. I don't know. Garden State soundtrack came out in 2004. So thing, things definitely diverged in, I think, both yes. of our musical tastes. Yeah. Well, yeah. If, if if one or two of the headlines that come out of this is A, Fueled by Ramen, whoa. <laughs> if the, the other headline might be like, this was just so much source material, so much stimuli. I'd be like, wait a minute, what? You know, and I'm sure like you mentioned earlier, we probably got to some of these in 06, 07 as we got through. But the fact that this many things, there's going to be more that we talk about all came out in 05 is just utter, utter insanity. Yeah. Um, I think I might've been aware of transatlanticism. I think that might've been one of the records that was in that binder my sure, sister got yeah. me for Christmas early in the 2000s. But you start to learn about what bands are, what catalogs are, what record, you know, like, this is their, you know, how even just like music works as you're growing up and becoming a teen. Um, so you're like, okay, cool. Motions or uh, Death Cab has a, another record. This is what it's called. And these are the songs on it. Nice. Um, but yeah, love it, love it, love it. I get another pick. So I'm going to pick. Hmm. This is a tough one, Tom. This is the first fork in the road, I think. <laughs> this is where we start. This is where it gets a little wild. And I don't want to go too crazy on you, but I also have to make a pick soon. Oh, here, I'll, while I'm thinking, um, we still have a few uh, listener nicknames. So hello to our reminisces and reminephews and our dot, 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 reminecties, <laughs> reminecherchiefs, and reminecterines. I love reminecterines. Yes, reminecterines <laughs> is solid. We've got a few more to work through in the next couple of weeks here. But yes, <laughs> one, one, one day one of you just listed a bunch of just like things that you might try to draw in a still life painting class or something. <laughs> uh, but it's got to love it. Okay. I've, I should make a decision here. Um, you know, in terms of songs, I just... No, I'm going to do it. Uh, Middle of Nowhere by Hot Hot Heat. I think Hot Hot Heat was one of those bands that I can never claim to have discovered on my own. Um, and the more I go back and visit the record, the more I realize there were three or four songs on that album that were just terrific, running out of time. Um, good night, good night, stuff like that. But I think Middle of Nowhere is my favorite song on the album. Um, but Hot Hot Heat was just when it's like, oh, there's so many bands. You know, it's kind of like I've told a story on the pod before about f discovering Modest Mouse and then going into iTunes and be like, they have that many albums? What? You know, like how many fucking bands are there? God damn, this is going to be hard to remember all these. But essentially this record turned out to be kind of after the fact i realized very important in middle of nowhere is just a solid tune gotta pick it even though running out of time and good night good night are the very exciting track two track three starting the album i don't know middle of nowhere is just a nice treat i think it's one of those late late track eight type good songs but yeah turns out i'm a hot hot heat fan or apologist or enthusiast it's hard to say couldn't name a single one of their songs so sure take it this might be a bleepable name, but that's like if you were in and around the social sure, circle. Sure, sure, sure. I think bleep both of those names, but uh, you you would come across what that the existence of that band somehow. Just like, what are these people into? I don't know. Smoking hookah in their garage, being like, what life are you living? Um, <laughs> anyway. So, okay. Do you remember AP World History? Was that sophomore year of high school or junior? Sounds like sophomore. That was the year we went Lasher. to DC. With, yeah. I did not go to DC. Oh, <gasps> that's right. You didn't go. I, I don't even remember why. I think you signed up late. Like you were the first one on the waiting list. Oh, okay. Anyways, sophomore year of high school. So this would have been 2006. Dan uh, Majeski, who was a friend of mine, we went all through Catholic school, middle school together. He was like, Tommy, you ever listened to the band Cartel? And I slept on it for so long because he was getting really into like, 
I don't know if it was like doom metal or something, but it was just like some some subgenre of metal that I was not interested in. So I assumed Cartel was this sludge space grind band, right? And um, he kept like following up with me. Again, I have these amazing friends that are like, did you listen to that band I told you about? And eventually I was like, oh, you know, fuck it, I'll give it a try. Cartel put it on and it was the best pop rock album ever. Chroma, right? One of them. And the song Runaway, like totally captivated me. They were one of the first bands, maybe other than Newfound Glory, that would do like their normal chorus twice. And then on the last one, it always started with like a halftime version. And they were so consistent, so utterly consistent with like the last chorus starting off a little bit of halftime. And we incorporated a lot of that into our band, Four Under Par. But yeah, the song Runaway by Cartel is so, so, so good. Again, I remember those AOL sessions that I found on whatever channel 1376 on the old CRTVs. They performed this live and it was so good. Cartel is incredible. I feel really bad for <laughs> the the episode we did. It was like honestly a one album wonder cartel, which is so sad to me because they're way too good for that kind of uh, shade thrown at them with a random podcast talking about their album but anyway my number five pick runaway by cartel super super good it's really good i'm just in silence because i'm so um angered by the fact that the wikipedia album release list i was looking at didn't feature this um that's an <laughs> oversight on my part I'm, I'm i'm legitimately upset uh, I don't have a lot of words to say other than, yeah, we did him dirty with that episode if only because we learned later, I think it was lead singer syndrome or something, but uh, Will went on and talked about how the band in a bubble project was, they were misled in a lot of ways mm. and made to look like, I mean, there was no chance for that. What was a very important album for them as a band in their career was made into this reality show Mountain Dew sponsored by KFC type, <laughs> you know, kind of a freak show thing. Right. Um, that's a really good pick. You know, I think honestly might have been the lead single off of it, or it felt that way yeah, in, in yeah. real time. But I think you're making the right pick here with Runaway. There was just a couple just absolute gut punch. Yeah. Um, there's a whole weird mindset because it's so poppy and fun, but there's not, there's, there's no lightness to the album. There's a heavy, <laughs> there's definitely, it's like, whoa, they're scratching a very strange itch, but it's inc- what the, f- what, you know, what's happening to me right now? I um, mean, they also weirdly coolly as a band, their albums, also start with C and have six letters in them, I think. Like, tech, if you go back and look, it oh. was like a thing for the band for a while, but Chroma and there's a few other examples that I can't think of off the top of my head. But Interesting. that's a great pick. I'm happy for you uh, that your day is going so well, but I am, I don't know if you, can, you know me, <laughs> as the tone of my voice, this is not a good day. I don't like this. <laughs> um, this is messed up. Uh, I can't believe that wasn't on the list that I was looking at. That's I'm, I'm upset with myself, really. But that's just an utterly fantastic pick. Good job. And Thanks. kudos to Dan for pushing you on on the issue. Yeah, yeah. He introduced me to them, and he didn't introduce me to Brand New, but he encouraged me to listen to their older album when I first heard Dejan Tondu. Yeah, Dan contains multitudes. He's not just <laughs> uh, the metal guy we all thought he was. For him to have been right. this thoughtful about his recommendations speaks volumes to uh, him him as a gentleman and as a music fan and uh, as a friend. So, yep. yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. I think who I think he's certified Sherpa on the show. So yeah, um, he's got to yeah, be straight. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Hey everyone, I want to take a minute to break in and thank our Patreon supporters in the emo elder tier, the Council of Elders. The list is growing, and thank you all so much. We have Andre Provost, Johnny Leftwich of the Steve Johnson's Happy Hour Podcast, Jason Carey, Anonymous, and new this week, good friend Chris Lukey. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. It truly, truly means a lot. And if anyone out there would like to support this podcast on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash reminiscent to find all the behind the scenes photos and videos, the post shows, the AMAs, early access to the episodes, everything that we do there. But either way, we are so grateful that you are here listening to the show. We love you and appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Back to the show. Number six, this is going to be, I feel like this could be contested. Um, it's a weird pick. <laughs> you okay? Just, just the suspense is killing oh. me. 
okay? I was like, are you having an <laughs> asthma attack? Oh, no. <laughs> no, but I'm glad. I can see why you're asking. Yes, no, no, no I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, bud. This song overtook our whole world for a little bit. I I later came to realize that it was widely hated, but Beverly Hills by Weezer was my introduction to the band. And I thought it Interesting was... Interesting pick. Such a fun song. Like, I'm not a huge Weezer fan. There's many songs that I really, I know. Really I was going to say, I w- I'm surprised you ever talk about Weezer, <laughs> like, in the world. But you actually like the song. For you to pick it here means you must actually enjoy the tune. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with the context. Like, when we first started our band, this was one of the first covers we played. Yeah, so, pretty pretty... Pretty basic uh, chord progression, a good garage band tune to try to to try to cover. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of fun. Like, I don't know, man. It's um, I just look back really fondly on it because of how we bonded as like not not new friends, but I feel like you know a lot of these songs like put more like roots in the ground into our friendship, and I feel like Beverly Hills was just an early one, so. I, I really appreciate the song for, you know, what it did for us as a band, like growing up and learning how to play music, something simple enough to be able to cover it confidently, uh, but also fun enough to play. It, it was just a good time playing that song with you guys. I'll keep Weezer out of my 10 and pick the song I had noted in the honorable mentions when we talk about it later, because um, I don't want to, there's so many, there's so much good source material. I don't want to double up on our official picks. Not that that's a rule for the draft or anything, <laughs> but it's a good pick, but I'm anxious to to say which one I would have picked okay. as like, because we seem to be like, okay, there's so many albums. What what would represent this band, this moment, this year well? And I think we've done a pretty good job so far at underscore reminiscent FM on Twitter if you disagree, which <laughs> we know a lot of you will and we are legitimately, <laughs> truthfully excited to to get it, get, it, yeah, get after it yeah. and get into it with all of you. Yeah, okay. So I would have picked a different song to represent that album, but there's a teaser for later for the honorable mentions to stick around for that. I get two picks coming my way. I think I, I, I'm going to go, let's just keep keep hitting my middle my middle weight hits that I had on my list and stay true to the plan, right? I think we always return to that line of thought here on these drafts. Give me an honest mistake by the bravery. Hmm. It's going to be a pick that I lay down at this moment right here with you on the pod. Um, the bravery should get talked about more on the pod overall, I think is an understatement. An honest mistake was the first song I heard by them. Uh, was definitely a LimeWire special off of, I think, Kevin Lee's computer. That band's got a pretty interesting energy and a pretty interesting arc because it's almost like, I don't know, in my head I had them l- like right next to Shiny Toy Guns when I f- went in the early stuff, but then they went in a very different, more palatable direction for records that came after that, subsequent records. So anyway, An Honest Mistake came out in 05. And in terms of being emo and feeling moody, don't look at me that way. It's like, oh, whoa, yep, yep, this is it. This will do. So um, really good song by The Bravery. And honestly, three or four of their songs are steady in the rotation kind of to this day. So shout out to The Bravery for our underrepresentation on the pod, I think, if nothing else. Sure. Any recollection of, of the band or memories? Um, I do remember it making its way onto my blue ipod mini somehow was not a fan of the song for some reason i okay. thought it was like a james mccallion recommendation it would yeah that that checks out yeah. i think that i think that checks <laughs> all the yeah yeah I, you know somehow i i equate this song with hurricane by something corporate i think of them like in a pair i don't know interesting I, yeah yeah i mean there's no reason for me to view the early iterations of them and shiny toy guns together but uh, brains are strange and I don't think we've ever claimed to be good at this. So anyway, um, right. yeah, love the bravery, but w- yeah, definitely honest mistake sounds weird than stuff that would come after, but all good in my book. Okay. Let's stay true to the plan here and give me, I think this counts. Yeah. Let's, let's just do this. Uh, I predict a riot by the Kaiser chiefs. When I saw Weezer in, and w- we're still planning maybe at some point this year to do our UK month, where we do songs by bands from the UK. Uh, But when I saw Weezer and the Foo Fighters at Cleveland State in, I can't think of the year, uh, mid-2000s, I guess, obviously. Anyway, Kaiser Chiefs were the opening act, and they just destroyed. I predicted Riot was their closer, I think, that night. And then uh, Weezer and the Foo Fighters went on to put on uh, quite the show. It actually, they might have been touring the records that both of those bands came out with this year. 
uh, all three of those bands, because Make Believe's in play. And I think we haven't even talked about the fact that Foo Fighters are in play as well, because In Your Honor came out in 05. So um, just an embarrassment of riches, but what a tour that was to see before I really had a chance to appreciate the Kaiser Chiefs or Foo Fighters at all. At the time, I was just going to see Weezer because I was an insane nerd. Um, <laughs> but yeah, give me I Predict a Riot. Very fun song. Of all the fun Arctic Monkeys era UK acts that were just kind of like Fratelli's, like we're having a f***ing blast over here. Yeah, I Predict a Riot, pound for pound. Delicious. A delicious fun song. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I'm not familiar really with with any of those acts, so sure. Nothing to add. <laughs> Um, and you know, let's, let's take the fun down a notch. Let's, uh, let's <laughs> which is, we all, it's a problem we have on the show. <laughs> let's stop having so much fun. And the, let's move into a genre you're not too familiar with. Cameron, one of the, like my melodic hardcore Sherpa introduced me to Norma Jean. <sighs> Sophomore year of high school. I think it would have been Mr. Taylor's like computer class which is weird because he later went on to be the psychology professor so multi-talented guy he introduced yep. me to norma jean and uh the album oh god the aftermath <laughs> which is just like the most <laughs> metal core thing <laughs> they um i forget what what it's called it's like a word thing where you connect two different words where like the ending of one word is the beginning of another the whole album was that and my favorite song on the album was Bay and Network. And they had this like, there was like the, the chorus was like this screaming part that had a melody to it. And I really enjoyed it. Norma Jean didn't have like a lot of refrains or choruses. And I kind of love them for that. But this was a, a really strong song for me. Uh, this is between me and this blade in my heart. <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> it feels like, emo song title mad libs but it really just is how norma jean chose to behave for a while they're so good man i love norma jean like every album they've put out is very very good i hate that they have such a good band name because it's one of my like on my deathbed i'm gonna be like i wish norma jean and i had clicked i wish it would have worked out <laughs> it just didn't man what a great band name um those tones man those tones it's too much it's not for me it's not for me so good. Definitely a relic of the era, though. I mean, for a band like that to have gotten famous, this was a, a window. The window was open in 2005. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to bring back down, get a little fun. Give me Make Out Kids by Motion City Soundtrack. Okay. I, okay. Okay. I really love this song. I love this little hi-hat pattern that he does, a little tss, tss, uh, which describes nothing, but it's just a really good song. Uh, make out kids never had a chance to be best friends. Is that the line or good friends? Yes, 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 yes. This and feels like rain come back to back on yeah. that album and just Oof. fight your face with fists <laughs> of sadness. Right, right. Yeah. They, at the beginning of the album, they're like, everything is all right. And then for the next 10 songs, they're like, <laughs> it does not narrator colon. It did not get better. It, it is not right. all right. Oh man. Yeah. I, I always thought the song was so fun though. I think it was also like, uh, my ex-girlfriend Hannah introduced me to this band. This is one of her favorites. And yeah, I mean, I kind of, I was so like f***ing smitten with her that it was like, it, oh, it's my favorite too, which is funny because like people who listen to the show and have for a long time will probably hear some stories of me like, oh, you like say anything. I hate say anything because I'm jealous that I think you like Max Bemis for some reason. Motion City soundtrack was like so undeniably good to me that it like overrode this like 17 year old f***ed up deranged jealousy in my head that it was like, no, I'm going to be with you on every take you have on Motion City soundtrack. So this was <laughs> our favorite <laughs> from that. <now>. Yes, yes. <laughs> I remember hearing the future freaks me out for the first time. And, oh and it's just God. like some of these ones we've talked about in this 05, like Paramore from Under the Court Tree. You just perk up and you're like, yeah. This this was supposed to be this way. You know, like <laughs> yeah. this checks so many boxes of everything I want to just shove into my ears for the next 25 years. Like, yes. So it's a good pick. It's hard to go wrong. It's kind of, with, with a lot of these, it's this draft could have been just two or three albums worth of songs yeah, that totally. we just really like. Do you have another one coming your way? No, it's two for you now. You're eight and nine. Okay, where are we at? Eight and nine? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Um, give me the oh, man. Okay. I've gotten worse and worse at this over time. <laughs> give me. Yeah. Let's just stick to the plan. In terms of songs that I just just love, give me Foxtrot Uniform Charlie Kilo by the Bloodhound Gang. I love this song so much. If only because they define the thesis statement for the band in such a beautiful way in the pre-chorus. Um, I Brazilian wax poetic so pathetically, but I don't want to beat around the bush. <laughs> it's got a Brazilian wax pun in it, but he, he's just like, hey man, we're going to sing about boobs forever. That's it. <laughs> Fucking, sorry. I'm making you blur, bleep a lot. Coitus, boobs, butts, Discovery Channel stuff. We're just, this is what our band is. We're going to dress like primates and we're just going to Tom Green hump stuff. It's just going to be that way for us. But the way he lays it out in this song is so beautifully put, I, I always have felt. And then it's just innuendos for the other parts. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> it is the most disgusting list of, you know, well, the music video points it out. It's Bam Margera in a banana car driving in and out of tunnels, essentially, <laughs> and just construction workers drilling. And yeah. it is what it is, man. The Bloodhound Gang, to their credit, yet. question mark? <laughs> like, yes. Um, this is, it, they They were never anything but exactly what they are. And um, also, this song rips it is just so explosively good everything about the chorus just feels right in my head in my body um fox chart uniform charlie kilo is my hands down favorite bloodhound gang song and easily makes my top 50 songs ever whoa maybe maybe top 25 every time i hear it i'm like oh right yeah this one is in for sure we were gonna do the music video like an episode and i think the we day still should of, the day of we pulled the plug because it's like what can you possibly say other than tan girl boobs vibrating from a jackhammer well <laughs> like, the thing is bam margera's in it you know that creepy guy at the beginning and end it starts with him saying fish don't fry in the kitchen and then at the end he's just that same guy shoving a banana in his mouth um there's a banana car that bam margera's driving i guess you could rank the innuendos but that would be kind of gross Tweet at us at underscore there was, reminiscent. There was FM no way to if, not if just it sound deserves like a gross, a, a bunch of gross shock jocks doing that episode. Sure, you know, on paper, does it deserve to be done? Yes, we sure, haven't. Sure, we haven't said no to the idea, but it's it's. I don't know if it's a relic of the era or what, but I just really love it. But not for the reasons of grossness. I just think it is like a masterclass in a band yelling to the world this is exactly what we are about and i'm going to poetically say what it is and then describe wieners going into <laughs> the holes for two and a half minutes straight in really disgusting ways um anyway i love it so much that's my eight let me take a peek at my list and then select give me woman by wolf mother one of those bands where I think Joker and the Thief in the Night made it onto one of the sub, one of the like second or third Shrek movies or something, but just kind of like one of those, I guess it was our high school era's Greta Van Fleet. It was one of those throwback, kind of like The Darkness and Wolf Mother were kind of these like throwback hair metal-y <laughs> rocky bands, but um, we got some good songs because of it. And Woman was one of those. That riff opens up and it's just like, yep, yeah, oh yeah, this will, this will play. So just fun, rocks hard as crap. And gets my vote. If we're going to talk about songs that got released in 05, I think you got to mention what Wolf Mother was up to at the time. Never even heard of them, so I'll let you mention them. <laughs> sure. Again, the honorable mentions are going to be not so, but just trying to work my way through my list as I had it ranked heading sure. into the draft, okay. which was a setup for failure as soon as you won the dice roll. But <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm content. I'm content. Okay. Nine or ten, this is always where it gets like super, super hard because there's so many songs left, but none of them I wouldn't like throw myself in front of a bus. Ah, me anyway, whatever. We'll just go. Yeah, the first the first three rounds were definitely more <laughs> Yeah, <intense then. laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Around two thousand six or seven. Again, I'm getting more into like metalcore and this and that. But my friend Seth, who we talked about earlier, the cool bangs, the the black jet black hair with a little bit of blonde in the bangs, introduced me to Chiodos when Bone Palace Ballet came out. And again, it was like I was really into that album. And he's like, did you know 
there's a whole other album before this one. So I got that. And <laughs> I remember like buying the physical CD and this is like 2008. And now <laughs> my friend Cameron was in my, whatever history class was. I was like, dude, check this out. And it was, um, like a, an open, what is that? A gatefold CD ca- uh, case with all's well that ends well. And I was like, dude, look, it's this album. And he's like, that album's like three years old. Who cares? <laughs> but it was just like, I was so stoked because I love Chioto so much, but all near eyes beware was like a really captivating song for me. I thought the chorus was really fun. Um, they're a fun band. They're really, really fun. I, I think I was definitely more into Bone Palace Ballet because it had like this crazy goth Victorian theme, almost like slightly in the way that My Chemical Romance really leaned into the whole uh theatric element in Welcome to the Black Parade. Oh, there's there's a theatric element to to being a 2000s emo. Well, <laughs> there's, there's, or, or an emo in general. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, if sure. I apologize to the freaking bravery for not being mentioned on the show enough, Chiodos deserves a written, a handwritten apology. Um, you had them as a ringback tone, <laughs> dude. Ringback tones. I can you yes. still get one of those? I kind of forgot. Those even existed. I, hope so. I, you know, I don't remember what song it would have been. I do remember the f- the first time I ever heard "Just the Girl" by the Click Five, which was on the <laughs> board for this year, was as my friend Josh Seymour's ringback tone, and I like texted nice. him like, "What song is that? I love it." <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's weird. All those hardcore eerie dudes had a soft side for <laughs> poppy stuff. <laughs> right, like right. I remember hanging out with um. Tyler James one night or no he was they were warming up before a gig and then he told Tony Heibel the bassist from Kansas City Massacre <laughs> what to play and they played a Weezer song warming up for their show before they did like a uh, either way I guess my point here is like oh you guys are fans of the music we like you guys are just cooler than us or so I don't know what my <laughs> thought process was but it's just like oh you guys are conscious during the same time period we are it's just I just adore you so that's the only difference I guess <laughs> right but, but um yeah I don't know kind of a Kind of a weird pick, but I love, 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 love Chiodos. I remember when their drummer no, quit. It would have been senior year of high school, and I was convinced I was going to try out as a drummer for Chiodos. But like the very first song I tried to play, I just like couldn't get it, and I was like, "They're not going to pick me." <laughs> so I just like gave up after yeah. twenty seconds. But um, yeah, there's that one, and then to kind of round off the list, this is a very important song to me. We did a whole episode about it. I honestly think it's one of our probably one of our best episodes. We all walked down the aisle to the song at my wedding. I will follow you into the dark by death cab for cutie. This is definitely, yes. I want to do an acoustic song draft at some point. And this would be, I mean, number one, probably maybe Let's do for it. both of us. Number one, we'd be fighting over that I dice roll. Um, Add it to the calendar. Super, super, yeah, it's super. It's gotten feisty, man. Song. The dice roll just determines. Fits, man. <laughs> right. Both in the D and D universe and outside of it in the universe of our, of our show. Or, if you go by last four of the social rules, um, <laughs> I just, just don't have leaving my enough on breadcrumbs hand. to have our lives ruined. Um, yeah, I think anyone who listens to the show knows how much. I think some of these drafts, if you listen to the show long enough and close enough, you pretty much can do some of these picks for us. I think after a little while, um, <laughs> but as we work through the decade, it's interesting to get into some of these. And I, we've said this like five times already, but I am crazy excited to get into the honorable mentions but i i, I guess yeah. i'll do my 10th pick and, and won't belabor that point too much um any of these yeah. could be in and out of this blurred line into the honorable mentions here but let me just make a pick i'm gonna pick at the bottom of everything by bright eyes uh that's another crazy record that came out this year i am gonna, I'm lying if i would say it was cool enough to go deep in that record or even in the bright eyes catalog but this was on a mix from someone from somewhere with that long monologue at the beginning of the airplane um i just really like the song the first time as a teen, you think about like people who are talking about death pretty openly and just thinking about things. And you're like, I'm an adult now. The world <laughs> is, you know, no, it's just not I'm an adult now, but it's just like, cool. I guess we're just thinking about this stuff now. You know, fast narrator, flash forward, still thinking about that stuff. <laughs> but um, no, it's uh, it was an interesting piece of art from the monologue at the beginning to, you know, the song itself. So um fun to grow up and do some of these things i think that belongs in not a bad way if it opens with uh coheed 
and ends with this song by Bright Eyes. That's an interesting <laughs> ride we're taking on this particular mixtape. But uh, I'm happy with my selections, and I am. You just want to go rapid fire back and forth, honorable mentions. Yeah, let's go honorable mentions. We can go back to back. You want to go first? Yeah, I was trying to pick ones that uh, you were a little more familiar with, uh, but uh, some of these, you know, it was, it's hard for me to tell sometimes. I know you don't like Ben Lee's Catch My Disease, but it might be in my top 25 all time and also came out in 05. I love it. Wait, was that the pick? So, that's my first off the list. We're doing honorable mentions. Okay, okay. Give me Remember the Name by Fort Minor. The 15% hey. Concentrated Power of Will. That song was so hey, you badass all when know it came it. out. You all <laughs> know it. Uh, give me E-Pro by Beck. Uh, again, embarrassment of riches as we go through here. <laughs> uh, the, girl's a, the Girl's a Straight Up Hustler by All Time Low. There you go. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> all right. Uh, give me Perfect Situation by Weezer, which would have been my Weezer pick had you not beat me to it with Beverly Hills. I think that song, that song was... Uh, Rivers being sad about stuff. Sign me up, brother. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> um, let's keep it in the family. Let's go Izzo slash In the End by Linkin Park and Jay-Z. They did their little mashup Whoa, thing. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, give me uh, call, something I found out about in college, but came out in 05. Uh, the Hold Steady, Your Little Hood Rat Friend. One of my top 50 tunes of all time, if not in my top 25. If I've said that 25 times on the show... Don't hold me to it. We'll sort it out <laughs> later. But I really like it. All right. Um, give me Hey There, Delilah by the Plain White Tees. Get out of here, brother. Get on. Get right on down the road. Take your hiney and get on <laughs> out of here, man. Uh, here's three from, you know, Hot Hot Heats, Running Out of Time, and Good Night, Good Night, and Girl by Beck off that same album. I'll get those out of the way. Stuff that was right up there with what I enjoyed about what I've said already. Andy McKee came out with an album called Art of Motion. And that was the first time I ever heard guitar played like that. And the song Rylin, I always thought was super, super beautiful. So I used to fall asleep to that song all the time. Give me Feel Good Ink by the Gorillas. Dude, oh, yes. I know. That yeah. uh, that almost made my uh, my top 10. Well, we'll talk about this in the post show. But yeah, where do we blur genre, et cetera, et cetera? What's the niche for the show? Uh, let me toss in the only difference between martyrdom and suicide is press coverage real quick because we already talked about panic, but that's got to be on there. Okay, give me the Everglow by May. I wasn't like super into May, but I did listen to that album a few times. Sam Cray encouraged me to listen to them. It's a good song. Yeah, man. Uh, give me All Cause of You by The 88. Uh, one of my, I really like that song. It's dangerous, emotion, fun, good rocking, like it. All right. Um, Just the Girl by The Quick Five. Here's a follow up to that. If I was like, which song came out in 05? Just the Girl by the Click Five, Here It Goes Again by OK Go, or Hide and Seek by Imogen Heap, Imogen Heap, which one of those would have come out in 05? The answer, it's a trick question. All of them. <laughs> everything you remember about that decade happened in 2005. What was that song by Imogen Heap? Uh, hide and Seek. The one, mm, what you say? Oh, <laughs> oh God. Okay, okay. Um, give me uh, Out of Left Field, Entombment of a Machine by Job for a Cowboy. That's yes, the one that has yes. that crazy high pitch scream that you yeah. incorrectly I won't reference do it. for any I other won't do metal it band. Now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it. No, I know what Job for a Cowboy is. I won't do it now unless unless you want me to. <laughs> um, <laughs> Something like uh, that. It's really a, a weird Homer <laughs> freaking out to something impression. But anyway, give me Over My Head by The Fray. Just yes, dude. Another blurred line genre thing for the show that, you know, will we get into Fray or No AR and all that crap? Who knows? I was, um, that was next on my list, man. That's a good okay. song. And uh, A Day to Remember does a great cover of it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, uh, let's get it started. Uh, <laughs> cough, Cough, It Started by The Black Eyed Peas. Yes. I'm I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I wasn't super into the Black Eyed Peas. My humps is a jam. Um, give me Dirty Little Secret by the All American Rejects. Nice. Okay. Move Along came out in 05. Crazy. I, younger me might be like, what? They're this deep in your honorable mentions? I'll be like, relax, kid. It's going to be a long 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> give me the mixtape by Jax Mannequin. Yeah. Fun song. Nice. Piano Power nice. Bomb, man. That was, that was sure it for a minute. <laughs> it was longer than a minute, brother. Brother, <laughs> brother, <laughs> give me one of the ones that I'm still not cool enough to claim to. I can't say the guy's name right, but uh, Sufjan Stevens, Chicago from Come On Feel the Illinois. Back when we thought he was going to write an album for all the states. Simpler Man. times. Let me find. Uh, 
love that that hard times article about Sufjan Stevens. Um, it's like one of the funniest headlines. Here we go. <laughs> so you loudly pronounced Sufjan Stevens wrong in a record store. Here's how to leave town and start a new life. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my life. Yes. Okay. So that's all I really had in my honorable mentions. The last thing I do want to mention is that between the buried in me released their album, Alaska that year and their bassist went to our high school. Uh, Dan Briggs. Whoa. Uh, that was a big album for like the genre. It's a really, really big one. So good for them. Let me rip through my final few best of you. Foo fighters. Hold me down. Motion city. Cold play. Fix you. We all, uh, you may have heard of this little band from the UK named Coldplay. Uh, Fall Out Boy, Dance, Dance. This Year by the Mountain Goats, probably my favorite New Year's song. Uh, but Mountain Goats, one of those bands I found out about in college, like Dr. Dog, who their pretender came out in this year as well. Feel Good Drag and Berlin. I talk about it a lot on the show, but will it get an episode? Dot, dot, dot. Stay tuned to find out. Probably not. The Geeks Get the Girl by American Hi-Fi. The Nationals, Mr. November, another college band that I found out about then. And this, I'm just saying it because... Aaron Lonke, our friend of the show, when we were in rural New Mexico together, hiking and going nuts, we learned the cover of and were wailing deep into the night, breathe in parentheses 2 a.m. by Anna Nalik, which is just a terrific song. By who? Anyway, Anna Nalik, Anna Nalik. It's, it doesn't belong on the list, but I love it a lot. I never, okay. I, I wanted to mention I'm a Hustler by Cassidy and breathe 2 a.m. by Anna Nalik. They don't have anything to do with our show but I love them so much. Awesome. Cool. Well, they don't belong in the playlist, so don't even add them, but it's like, you, <laughs> well, the world needs to know. Well, there's a list. We're going to have the top 20 and all the honorable mentions on our Spotify and Apple Music playlist. You can find the links in the show notes or on our website, reminiscentpodcast.com slash episode slash 204. You know what to do. Tweet at the show. Let us know what songs would make your 2005 mixtape draft. And uh, yeah, be nice, handle with care. <laughs> with there will be rebuttals. We almost didn't even want to do this. I know. We've been putting it off for a while. We did like 2000 to 2003 immediately when we thought like, oh, we could do mixtapes. Yeah. And then we were like, whoa, we need to pace ourselves. And I was like, oh no, our <laughs> freshman year, no. And and it's going to get harder every single year as we inch ever closer to Attack Attack's debut album. <laughs> 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 it will, but also I think we are, we're allowed to take a moment to be like, 2005 was insane. insane. It was just insane. Yes. yes. Not to mention that like three cheers for Sweet Revenge and American Idiot only missed this year by a couple <sighs> months of really, it's just, just insanity. <laughs> oh, to be a teen in 2005. Yes. Jesus. Yeah, man. <laughs> That's what we're here. Breaking it down. The feelings that were felt a memoir by us just now. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Song of the week. Uh, Give Me Lovin' Me by Kid Cudi, featuring Phoebe Bridgers off of his, I think, third installment of the Man on the Moon stuff. Uh, the first installment was my freshman year of college record. I cared for it deeply. Uh, I'm not sure the magic is still there, but some interesting moments. We ran through it the other day while I was on a walk with my pup. Okay. Um, Since we recorded last, Taylor Swift put out an album. Tis the Damn Season is super, super You could have said that between every episode we've done this year. she's been <laughs> rather she's productive <laughs> um that but i also want to give a second one just because this really deserves to be in there good charlotte put out a new song hey a couple days ago called last december it's really good it still sounds right. like the good charlotte that i uh i know and love hard working boys ago. yeah I so know. also uh, that episode was very fun. Lifestyles yes. Rich and the Famous. Yes. Just delightfully strange in every sense. I think that's it, man. Head to the post show. Talk about blurring the genre that we talk about on the show because it's kind of tough to do the 05 draft. There was so much. Yeah. And I think we're going to do, it might be a longer one. I, I kind of wanted oh, to do the news Maybe we say that for next week. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Save that for next week. Because it is New Year's Day. So listen to that uh, that other it Taylor is. Swift song Today, called New Year's Happy Day. New Year. Happy New Year, bud. <laughs> we forgot to mention that. <laughs> yeah. Should we have done more club horns for 2020 ending? I think probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. Yeah. Uh, All right, man. Love you. Uh, and yep. love you if you're listening. The you. Ustedes, et cetera, multiple versions of you, what you means. Uh, love you all. And thanks for being here. And happy 2021. Let's hopefully it's a, it's a good year for everybody. <sighs> all right. Bye.
Thank you all so much for listening to the year 2005 mixtape draft. This one was so much fun, but it was so, so terribly difficult. Please hit us up on Twitter at underscore reminiscent FM. Let us know what songs from the year 2005 would have made it into your mixtape draft. And please make sure to stick around to the end of the episode to hear Last Letter's new single, I Love You, Amy Smart, in its entirety. Happy New Year. We love you all so much. Catch you next week. What do you want? I just want to apologize. I'm sorry. I was out of line, okay? You're an asshole.